We are in the end of the year holiday season, a busy time of the year for those across all different walks of life and faiths. And when we think about this time of the year, we think about the big three holidays at the end of the year, Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa. Joining us now on the program from Chabad Lubavitch of Michigan is their executive director and vice president, Rabbi Kesriel Shemtov, to talk to us about Hanukkah. Rabbi, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Yeah, glad to have you on with us uh, to talk about this holiday. So many people that uh, aren't aware of the meaning of Hanukkah or aren't really aware of the major uh, high holidays uh, of the uh, Jewish faith may not be familiar with just how, how significant Hanukkah is uh, to those that practice Judaism. It's not, the, it's not the most important holiday. It's not necessarily the highest of the holidays in, the, uh, in uh, Judaism, but it does have quite a lot of significance. So for those that aren't familiar, tell us about Hanukkah and what significance it has to those that practice Judaism. Yes, uh, Hanukkah, it's always exciting to be coming towards this wonderful holiday. It's a warm holiday, a beautiful holiday, a holiday that warms the hearts and inspires us uh, to bring light into the world. And um, it's for this season, it's the most important holiday to us. Uh, you know, it's over 2000 years ago when the Jews were in the Holy Land, they were being oppressed as a people by the Syrian Greeks who were trying to root out the culture and religion of Judaism and you had a small band of Jews that were able to come together and fight back, stand up for their religion, stand up for their dedication to God, and prevailed. The miracle that happened was they came back to the Holy Temple, and in the Holy Temple, which was defiled, disgraced by the Greeks, they were able to then dedicate that Holy Temple and light the candelabra, the menorah, uh, the menorah was a feature of the Holy Temple where every day you would light this candelabra to light up the temple and beyond the temple to the world. Uh, but you had to do it with pure olive oil. And there was only one jug of pure olive oil available, which can only last one day. And this is the miracle that happened. They lit the candle, they lit the jug of oil, the menorah, and the miracle happened that it remain for eight days. And so we celebrate this celebration of Hanukkah throughout history. And it's really a celebration for the Jewish people and beyond the Jewish people, where it teaches us the power of religious freedom, of being able to stand up to your values, to the values that God has given us. And it tells us how each one of us can become a light and light up the world around us. Rabbi, you, you, uh, I understand from our notes that you brought some symbols with you today that represent this holiday in the Jewish faith. Can you tell us about those symbols and, and their meaning both for Hanukkah, but also for those that practice this religion? I could tell you about the symbols. I can't show them to you. Okay. But, uh, but uh, you know, the symbols, the first symbol that we have is the candelabra itself. Um, and, you know, this is the first and foremost tradition of Hanukkah where Jewish families, each one in their own home, will get together with their family for eight nights and make the blessings, light the candles, sing the melodies, and join in in this special celebration. So that is, first and foremost, the tradition of Hanukkah. Um, and then there's other symbols. There's the playing of the dreidel. The dreidel is a little game that was played because when the when the foreign soldiers were trying to uh, prohibit the study of the Torah, of the Bible. Uh, the Jewish children were studying the Torah, and when they heard that the Greeks were coming, they would put away their books and play with a little dreidel. And it was basically a game with, together with some money, um, and that's the way they were able to camouflage their learning of Torah, so we play that dreidel. Um, other special foods that there are with this holiday is because it was the miracle of the oil, the oil that lasted for eight days, that we eat various foods with oil, like the latkes, uh, these wonderful uh, pancakes that we eat, and uh, some eat uh, donuts, all fried with oil, representing the miracle of the oil. 
We're joined by uh, Rabbi Kasriel Shentov on today's edition of the MegaCast. He is the vice president and the executive director of Chabad Lubavitch of Michigan uh, on the program with us today. And, and what's great about this time of the year is that the celebrations always begin uh, here throughout the Metro Detroit community for all of our holidays across religions. And so many people join in across religions too, A, to learn more about uh, their neighbors in our local area, but also to celebrate the holidays in a variety of different ways. You have a great event coming up this weekend, Menorah in the D, happening on December 18th at Campus Martius in Detroit at 5 p.m. Tell us about Menorah in the D and uh, why people should participate. Well, Menorah in the D, we're going to be celebrating. It's our 12th year, um, and many people participate. Thank God there's a lot of uh, anticipation and discussion within the community. Um, you know, we've been growing over the years. We go out into the center of the city in Campus Martius. We have a 26 foot menorah and the community comes together to light that menorah and, and essentially launches the holiday of Hanukkah for the city of Detroit, for the state of Michigan, because uh, it's at five o'clock, 530 on, on December 18th, uh, which is the beginning of the first night of Hanukkah. And we have um, members from all segments of the community, including uh, dignitaries and corporate sponsors, donors, volunteers, and so many thousands of people that want to be part of the kickoff of Hanukkah this year. And it's always just a festive, wonderful celebration. Um, what's unique about now is that we, uh, because of COVID, uh, we not only have thousands of people that come to the center of the city, but we created this entire production that streamed online as we're doing that. And uh, we have tens of thousands of people that are watching and participating in the celebration of Hanukkah. You know, this year we took a special effort, uh, you know, we're, the, the, we're making this event of Menorah and the D and uh, the main presenter of this event is Chabad Lubavitch of Michigan. And we're, we're concerned about every single Jew who is not only in the Metro De Detroit area, but throughout the state of Michigan. And uh, we found out that there are people from throughout Michigan, some of the rural areas that also participate in the online program of Menorah and the D. So we made a special effort to put the word out and some of them are coming onto Zoom and participating. So we're really looking at this as a broad community celebration. And of course, it's not only members of the Jewish community that are part of this, but it is well, way beyond the Jewish community because so much of the message really is a message that applies to all of us. You can find more information on Menorah in the D, including ways you can participate both in person and virtually by visiting their website, menorahinthed.com, menorahinthed.com for information, uh, including RSVPing for, for the event and for the live broadcast on their website, finding information on how you can participate through volunteering and more. Again, the website is menorahinthed.com. And of course, Rabbi, you would uh, expect with this being a Jewish holiday that uh, the audience, that those who would be participating would be particularly a Jewish crowd. However, Habad Lubavitch, yourself and others that are uh, running this event, highly encourage other people from across faiths to participate. Why is that such an important element of A, the celebration of Hanukkah, but also this event, Menorah in the D, happening this weekend? Well, first of all, I do want to say that this event is presented by many Jewish organizations, really across the spectrum of the Jewish community, including the Jewish Federation, Chabad and the D, and so many other organizations that are part of this. We have, for example, um, a lamplighter ceremony, which honors eight lamplighters from across the community. So it's a very broad-based uh, presentation um, and it reaches out the message to all um, citizens. And uh, one of the messages that I think we can learn from Hanukkah, which is really a universal message, is the story of Hanukkah was really a struggle for religious freedom. And thank God we live in a country where we're blessed with religious freedom for all of us. And that's something that all of mankind can learn, how we can uh, get along and be able to help each other with um, each one in our own way, in our own, uh, um, to help each other um, practice and live our lives in peace and harmony. So that's number one. And the second message is that the message of Hanukkah really is that 
hidden jug of oil that seemed to be defiled, seemed to be under challenge. And when you light that candle, there's a miracle. It brings warmth and light. And the message for us, the spiritual message for everyone is that all of us have within us a soul. And that's the miracle jug of oil. And when you're going through a challenge, when you're going through difficulty, and there are many members in our community that are going through challenging times, especially after COVID, et cetera. And the message of Hanukkah is light that jug of oil. You will see that you have the power and the blessing to be able to light up your life in a time of darkness. And not only to light it up for yourself, but to become a lamp lighter, to be able to light up the hearts of others. And if all of us in our community would learn to reach out and embrace others, light up their lives, bring a candle to them, that will make this world a much better place. So this is truly a message, a universal message for all of us here in the city of Detroit and beyond. Rabbi Shem Tov, appreciate you joining us and telling us more about this event. December 18th at Campus Martius, as well as online at menorahimagey.com. Rabbi, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me and happy Hanukkah to all your listeners.